All right, today we've got the G5 um, no-till drill from PH Outdoors. This is a five-foot unit that plants at seven and a half inch spacings. This is a no-till drill that's available from the local conservation districts up here in northern Utah. And we're going to go through the parts and how to calibrate and set up this drill to be able to be successful at no-till planting. So the G5 is like many other drills. It's got some of the same basic components. Um, here is where your manual is that you need to reference for, say, going through the calibration process, other, other parts. This drill also has a bracket for extra weight. If you do find that you need to add additional weight, if the ground's harder or you have a lot of residue or something that requires a little bit more weight on the drill, this bracket can accept suitcase weights that are tractor weights that are typically available that you have there on the farm. We have also your safety um, stand for when you're not using it. That's right here and, and the lock pin on, on that. And then this unit does come with an acre meter that is able to track the total number of acres that it's been used on in accumulation over the time. And then also how many acres that you're planting on that field itself that gets reset each, each time you use it. So it gives you a good chance of knowing, you know, how much you've gone and you can back uh, do your calibration and make sure that you're, you're seeding right. Um, then we'll move on to our, our uh, seed rate settings for the gearing. So here you have your main gearbox for the main seed box. This is the adjustment knob that you can dial in the seed. You'll have your, your gauge right here that gives you a number from one to 11 um, for your settings. Then this is the lock-in knob so that that adjustment doesn't change. So you need to make sure that you loosen that up when we're doing calibration, but we'll go through that in more detail. Here is our main drive wheel that drives the, the, the meter units for both the small and the large box. So this needs to be in contact with the ground when you're planting. Um, when you're transporting, you wanna make sure that you lift it up high enough that this isn't going along the ground. Then we have, this is a disc drill. You notice here is your double disc openers. So that's what's going to open your seed channel. So if you wanna be successful in no-till drilling, there's four things basically. You need to open a seed channel, place the seed, firm that seed, and then close it back up. So this is your first step inside that. That's the, the openers. We wanna make sure that when you have the drill attached to the tractor, that this is very level, that the opener and then the closing wheel in the back are at the same level not tipped forward or backwards, otherwise you're going to be placing seed too shallowly or you're not going to be closing properly. So you wanna be as about as level as possible. All right, so we have our main seed box here. This is where you'd want to plant your larger grain seeds, um, even anything, beans, corn, um, that might be in some of the mixes. It has a nice, uh, lifting lid that keeps itself open when, you, when you're filling it up. And then inside there is dividers in between each of the meter units. So if you did want to plant separated crops, say you want to plant one row of a certain crop and then another row of a different crop, you can do that using these dividers that are inside. Then we move on, we have the small seeded box. So this would be things like alfalfa that are, need to be planted through this. So this is a separate little box here for lower rates of smaller seeds. Uh, alfalfa is probably one of the more typical. Again, it, it opens up a little bit different than some of the other seed units because it's closer, it folds back instead of folding up. And then this is our seed rate adjustment for the small seed. So the big box was there on the side we walked through. This is your adjuster for your small seed box. And then you have your drop tubes for your small seed are these clear tubes that are in the back that you can see. All right. So as we talked about, you need to have those four operations for successful planting, opening, seed placement, seed firming, and closing. So back here we have our closing wheels that are also our depth gauge wheels that will keep the seed from going too deep. And then you can see a bar right here. This is your drop seed tube for your small seed box. So that clear tube comes inside there. Next, you see there is this pin 
keeper here. This is your seed depth, depth adjustment. On this drill, there's three preset depths, half inch, one inch, and two inches. To change the depth, you simply pull the pin off of this, this lock pin, pull this out, and then you place the pin either forward or backwards on these three sets, holes, based on what you need. The label there gives you, a, a, to, so you know which depth. So you have two inches, one inch, and half inch. So today we wanna have this placed at one inch for what we're planting. And you just put that pin back in, keep that lock. And so as this is set down on the ground, that bar blocks up against this point here. So it only is allowed to go so far, and that controls the depth. Now the seed for the main seed box actually comes and drops down a tube that's a little further back here in between the two openers. All right, so then we have our seed meters. So each box has a meter underneath it in multiples for each of the openers. And inside that meter back here, this, this is the meter cog that basically meters out the seed. Underneath it is what they call a seed element or seed gate, and that can, can open or close depending on how big of the seed you need, so you can adjust it. So if you're planting bigger seed, you're gonna want to have this gate open a little bit more, allowing the bigger seed to come through the meter and down the funnel and into the opener. Now, when you transport this, you wanna make sure that you have that seed gate, that seed element fully closed, uh, it's better for transport. And when you're going to uh, finish and you want to change from one seed to the next, you can also fully open those gates that will allow it to clean out the excess seed that's in the meter. This tray down here at the bottom, this funnel tray is a, another component that we're gonna utilize when we do a, a calibration. So it, right now it's set up to run and we'll show you how to, how to utilize that when we want to do a calibration. All right, so this is the adjustment for the, the seed element, that gate that's underneath the meter. As you can see, it says close this direction, open this direction, and it has some pre-settings. So if you're in transport mode, you want to make sure that that is all the way to zero, and then this, you loosen or tighten that down to keep that in place. And then if you want to clean the seed out, you can go all the way to here, and that will make those fully open and allow all the seed out of the meter as you, as you move along. Um, right now we've got this adjusted about two because we're doing a cover crop mix that has both large and small seeds inside it. So we kind of want to find a happy medium ground. It takes a little bit of playing with, but just adjust it as you see. If you see seed getting cracked or anything like that that's coming out of the drill, then you obviously have this closed down too much and that seed is getting cracked as it's trying to go through the meter past and down into the funnel, past the element and down into the funnel. So that's your adjustment here. Um, the rest of the drill, we just have another suitcase weight that's up here up front on this side. When you do put weights on, it's best to balance it left and right so that you don't have weight just on one, but there is a bracket here for weights as well. All right. So let's go through the calibration process for this drill. So what you wanna do is first get the seed that you're going to plant with, and you wanna put enough seed in each box just to be even and cover each one of those meters. So we filled it up with just the right amount of seed. Don't fill the box all the way up if you're doing a calibration because if something goes wrong, you don't wanna to have to remove a bunch of seed out of the drill. So we've just placed enough to do the calibration, but that it's an even amount in each one of the, of the dividers above the meter. The next step we're gonna do is we need to reverse this pan, the funnel pan down below. So with this unit that it has the small seed box, we need to pull the tubes that go to the small seed first out of the way so we can get this pan flipped. So they just simply pull out of the tube, nothing, nothing complicated about it. And then there are two uh, keeper knobs here on this tray that you need to loosen up and take completely off and set them aside so that you don't lose them because they will need to be put back. So there's one on this side as well. And then you simply pull this tray out 
and we're going to flip it over. As you can see, this is, this is the direction. You can see the funnels funneling down. That's the right side up. Now, before you remove this out, you want to also make sure those seed element gates are not all the way down and in the funnel. Otherwise, you'll break them off as you pull this out. Okay, so we take the tray, we're just gonna flip it over and set it back down underneath here. Get these out of the way. Now there are two threads for the keepers that you need to make sure you line back up. It'll allow that tray to slide back to where it needs to be. Make sure it's slid all the way so that it's underneath the meters fully. Okay, so once we have that in place, the next thing we have seed in the box, we're gonna want to come over to the other side of the drill and make our adjustments to our seeding rate to where we feel it's, it's ready to start doing the calibration. All right, so once you're ready to start your calibration, we want to kind of guess where we need to start at. Unfortunately, this model doesn't have any seed rate charts inside it. So your best guess is where you're going to want to start. So you need to loosen up this knob right here will allow you to be able to adjust the, the rate. You can see through this window, there will be a little bit of a line that will line up with these numbers. So we want to take and adjust it whichever direction that takes it to the number that you want. And once you're there, you're going to want to tighten that set right back down so that it doesn't move. And then we're ready to run the meters. So making sure that you have the drill on the safety stance so that the drive wheel is above and you're able to freely spin it. Now, this unit you do 26 rotations of the wheel to get a tenth, basically a tenth of an acre to do your calibration. It has a nice little hole here on the one spoke so that you can use that to count your rotations and make sure that you spun 26 times completely around and stopping at the same point. The seed will be caught on that tray so you don't have to worry about having a bag or anything underneath the drill. So we're just gonna rotate this 26 times. And once you've done that, and making sure that you stop right back at the same point you started, we can weigh the tray. So the next step we need to do is we need to weigh the seed that's in the tray where we've caught it. I have a, just a small little kitchen scale here that I'm using. You can use a fish scale or anything like that that'll simply be able to weigh it. This unit doesn't spit out a lot of seeds, so typically you're not going to be much more than a pound, um, potentially at a time um, for your calibration. So you don't need a gigantic scale. In fact, a smaller scale will do better. And then we're just using a little catch cup Make sure that when you do set this on the scale that you're tearing it out and zeroing it out so that the what you're using to catch isn't considered in the weight. Then we're going to pull the tray simply out. And as you notice, the seed has been caught inside there. Just want to shake it down to the bottom. Try not to spill any out, which I'm not the best at. But get that down to the bottom where you can catch it on your scale. So we'll just take this and we're gonna dump that in the scale and see what the weight is. Make sure that you don't have any in your way. So you need to measure it in pounds. So we wanna know how many pounds this is. So because it is under a pound, it's actually 3.2 ounces. We're gonna take 3.2 over 16 to give us a decimal point. And then we're gonna times that by 82, which will convert this from our 10th of an acre that we put, spit out to an acre, pounds per acre basis. So 3.2 over 16 times 82 is 16.4 pounds. That's how much at the current rate we have it set that it would be planting. All right, so once you've got your weight, if you're not where you wanna be, if it's more or less, then you're gonna to want to go back, readjust your gearing until you 
and then do another calibration until you get close to what you want. And this is a drill you're not going to be right on, but try and get as close as you possibly can, um, maybe within a half a pound or so per acre or a quarter pound per acre for a small unit like this. But nothing's gonna be exactly perfect. It will vary a bit, but just try and adjust. Then we wanna make sure that we put this back. Once we've done the calibration, we're done. We wanna flip the tray back over again so that the funnels are small end down. And then we're gonna place it back on those threads. And then make sure that you put the, put the locks, knobs back on so that doesn't move. Okay. Then we want to make sure that we place these tubes back into the into the drop tube, metal drop tube that's there. I find it's simple, easiest just to place these here and not try and get them into the metal tubes from the top side here, because it's a little hard sometimes to line them up. Just place them through and then come down and then place the tube within the metal tube. Make sure all of those are back. Now, if we're doing a calibration for the small seed box, we don't flip the tray because the seed is coming through the small seed tubes here, but you would want to pull those tubes out and probably catch them in a bag or a tarp or something like that. And then do the same thing, weigh it, times it by 82, and you'll have your pounds per acre that you're planting through the small seed box. All right, so now everything's calibrated. You've got it set where you want. We wanna just do a couple checks. Make sure that you have your, your lids for your seed boxes, that they are securely down with their keepers. And then we'll want to lift the unit up where this is a three point hitch unit. You're gonna to wanna to lift it up and make sure that you remove your safety stands and store them in the upright position before you plant. And to do that, you simply pull the safety, you turn the safety pin up to where it's straight up and down. It allows you to pull it out. You want to kind of hold on to that. And then you just lift it and realign it with the, with the hole that keeps it at the right height. Again, the pin has to be up to go in because it has a flat spot here and then you turn it down and that, and that locks it so that it isn't removed while you're driving. Make sure all of these are up, otherwise they will drag in the ground and bust. You don't want to try and run the drill through the field with these, these down. But once you're done with the drill and you're, you're placing it somewhere to store it, before you unhook it from the three point, make sure these are all down and locked in the proper position. So that's how we calibrate the G5 uh, no-till drill. Um, that's available at your local conservation district here in northern Utah. Um, if you do have questions, you can reach out to the conservation districts or the resource coordinators in your area, and they can help you identify what equipment might be necessary that you're trying to utilize. Um, for this particular model, a couple things to keep in mind though, it is about 1,800 pounds, and your tractor is, should be about 40 horsepower or larger. So a smaller ultra compact tractor around 25 horsepower won't have the ability to lift this unit. So you do wanna make sure that you have a minimum of horsepower, about 40 horsepower to, to lift this unit, because it is heavier than it looks. 